something we don't want to admit sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm the distraction. I've been many times. I'm not proud of it, but I've been the distraction many times in my marriage. I, I, and I thank God for showing me me in that. Let's start with um, Genesis 2 and 24. Um, anybody? Oh, you have it? Mm -hmm. Tell us what version you have, if you don't mind, and I just read. read. New King James. Okay. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and, and, his, and, shall, his wife. and shall be joined, united, cleave, mm -hmm. and cleave to his wife. Mm -hmm. And they shall become, become one flesh. Mm -hmm. Read the uh, 25th verse also, I'm sorry. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. In each other's presence, the Amplified said there wasn't a shame in each other's presence. Um, Can you read what that? Do you have the Amplified? Um, the, the it says, "Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother, and shall be become united, and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh." And the man and his wife was both naked, and they were not ashamed; they were not embarrassed or ashamed in each other's presence. I get a lot of stuff out of those scriptures, but 24, the reason why I wanted us to read 24, just so we'll know, therefore a man should leave his father and his mother, and they should become united and cleave to his wife. They should become one flesh. When it says, therefore a man should leave his father and cleave to his wife, mm -hmm. that is the assignment for the man. Just so we have understanding right. in that. Uh -huh. That is the assignment for the man. And then it says, they. Man was singular at first. Mm -hmm. Do y'all realize that? Uh -huh. It said man right. was singular. But then that last part of that verse, it says they. Mm -hmm. That's where you come in. Mm -hmm. And it don't say they if he's doing this or ain't doing that. It just says they. They become one flesh. Mm -hmm. Automatically. So if they, meaning you and him, become one flesh, mm -hmm. you can't be at one with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It, it just don't happen. It just no. cannot happen like right. that. If you choose to stay connected, united to someone else, and you also try to unite yourself with your spouse at the exact same time, you bring a distraction in the union. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And the man and his wife were both naked. And we're not embarrassed or ashamed in each other's presence. Sometimes we have issues with this. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, and the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not, they were not embarrassed. They were not embarrassed. They were not ashamed. And I want us to see this. In whose presence? God's presence. No, in each God's other's presence. presence. They were not ashamed and they were not embarrassed in each other's presence. Sometimes when we begin, when we uh, get, get united with, our, with these men, we got so much worldly residue on us that's clinging to us. We are ashamed. I mean physically and spiritually. We should not be ashamed or embarrassed. It says they were not ashamed or embarrassed in each other's presence. It's okay. You should be ashamed and embarrassed in somebody else's presence if it's not your spouse. Mm -hmm. But in each other's presence, you should not be ashamed. And this is what the word is saying, or embarrassed at all in each other's presence. Mm -hmm. If you have residue from the world that has, you have not been cleansed and delivered from, you will be ashamed. And I'm making that point because well, I don't care if you've been married two days or 30 years or five years. You, at this point, if you are embarrassed or ashamed to be in your husband's presence, physically naked, spiritually naked, there's a problem. Because we should not be ashamed or embarrassed. Why are you saying spiritually? If he's not where... I'm not saying where you think he should be, but if he's not where God 
thinks he should, God knows he, she, she should be. You should not be embarrassed or ashamed to be who you are spiritually to him. Regardless of what he's saying, doing, or whatever, you still should be who you are. Um, I was intended to grab one of those points for my class because somebody asked the question about the spouse not wanting you to go to church or something, and, and then what if he don't want to go to church or something of the sort. That doesn't that is even matter. What about you? What are you supposed to be doing? You should not be ashamed or embarrassed spiritually. Have church at home. The church is in you. If 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 it's going, if you're going to be a distraction by going there anyhow, you need to seek God's face because you can still have church. And guess what? Our loving God, He is so merciful and He's so patient and He's so loving. He's going to make sure that you're not in lack as long as you're in the will of God. Amen. So just because you ain't in my face on Sunday Amen. and your husband is asking you to stay at home, then you probably need to, you know you need to be at home. Amen. You ain't missing nothing out if you know how to get in God's place. Get in His face, lay before Him. Lay before Him before your husband get up. Lay before Him. So you'll be strong when He gets up. And you'll be able to lay, labor and serve Him in the manner that God wants you to. Not that you want to. Mm -hmm. And you serve Him the way God would have you to serve Him and labor before Him and, and be the example before Him. Guess what? He's going to be having church and don't even know it. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious because the church is in us. Amen. And I ain't talking about you. You got to be slapping and laying hands on him all the time. And God said, trying to whoop him with the word because God didn't whoop you or me. Amen. And he allowed us to be wherever we are in the spirit Amen. with him right now. Amen. So that ain't our job. Hallelujah. But you serve that man as a holy woman of God. You serve him by doing what Christ has created or ordained you to do. The Bible tells us to love the Lord our God with all our heart. And all our might and all our soul. That's our job. And if you surrender, if you make time, and I'm saying in the morning, but whatever time that fits in your schedule, if you make time with your God to just love on Him, that same love will pour on your husband. Yeah. I mean, it really will. You will serve Him in such a loving way that He will be humble. And he will submit to you just as well as you submit to him. And he will love you. He will begin to love you the way you need to be loved as you continue to respect him and esteem him. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, who had the next scriptures? Uh, let's go to Matt, uh, Matthew. Who had Matthew? Okay, if y'all could turn there so we could kind of, I don't know about y'all, but I'm kind of anal. Mm -hmm. And I like to look at stuff when people are reading. Matthew 19 and 5. Mm -hmm. And would you please tell me what version you have? And keep in mind, in order to bring it into context, you okay. have to read 4 and 6. Come on. To bring it together. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain, meaning two, shall be one flesh. That's the question. Wherefore, well, it was written before that, they are no more twain but one flesh. What well, therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. All right. Let's see what we can do with that. Um, I'm going to read it and amplify it if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. He replied, Have you never read that he who made them from the beginning, the beginning. made them male and female? <laughs> this answers some of the questions for me that was answered last night about gay and mm -hmm. things of that sort. But it said, He replied, Have you never read that he, mm -hmm. our creator, mm -hmm. he, our creator, who made both of them, them from the very beginning, from the very beginning, made them male 
and female. <clears throat> and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be united firmly, joined, joined inseparable to his wife. Inseparable, that is so important, mm -hmm. to his wife. Anything, anything, any person that is in a place in your life that separates you from the, the man that you are joined to, he or she or it is a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a distraction. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if it's mama, if it's daddy, <laughs> if it's your child, Amen. I don't Amen. care if it's your spiritual father, your God child. If they are in between, if your relationship is so strong that it divides this God-given unity, mm -hmm. that is a problem. And they're not necessarily the problem. It's you because you let them in. Mm -hmm. So you got to do what you got to do to get them out because they weren't part of the union. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. One flesh. Uh, verse 6 says, so they no longer two, mm -hmm. but one flesh. Mm -hmm. So they no longer two, mm -hmm. but one flesh. Why is that so important in serving him that y'all are no longer two, but one flesh? Yeah, I don't know about y'all. I'm going to go get me something to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go in the kitchen and fix me something to eat. And he in there, and he hungry too. <laughs> I mean, just look, I'm just trying to think of little, little, little things. You know, I know what he like, and I'm going to go to the store to go get something sweet, and I'm, because I, I want something sweet, and I know what he like, mm -hmm. and we're one. I better grab him something sweet, too. Right. And the thing about this, all of this little stuff, all of the stuff that goes on when we serve it, uh, around the servant, all of that stuff doesn't matter when it comes to making a decision in your servant, your servanthood. Right, right. Meaning, we could have just had a discussion and I didn't like how it ended. But I'm going to get me something sweet. I still yeah, got to get him something, something sweet too. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we all change what we should do because of a circumstance. How many of y'all know that God don't change? <laughs> because of our circumstances, his principles are always yeah, the same. Right. If it's my boo, his principles are the same. If it's my mama, his principles are the same. <clears throat> Across the board. Mm -hmm. And our principles, our principles... And the thing that we are ordained to do as, if, as far as serving our spouses, the principles does not change because of how I'm feeling, how emotional I may or may not be at that time, what I feel like I don't feel like giving myself, I don't feel like because of this, all of the because and what took place, it does not matter when it comes to serving good. You got to die. Tell yourself, I die daily. I got to die. I don't even want to die, but God, I know I got to die because it's going to honor you because I love you with all my heart, my soul, and my spirit. I got to die. And I'm going to serve anyhow. You have to, you have to train yourself to die, to do what God would have you to do on behalf of that spouse. We, we have to train ourselves. It, it ain't always easy. It ain't saying it's easy. It's complicated. It ain't easy. It's complicated. Because you in union with somebody that don't think like you, that don't necessarily handle situations like you. You know what I'm saying? Flesh ain't saved. My flesh ain't saved. His flesh ain't saved. So stuff gonna come up at different times. But still, I, I can't put my keep my eyes on him. I gotta do, and you gotta do what you know you call to do regardless. Amen. We struggle sometimes. In this area because we lose sight of ourselves. And I'm too pleased to eyeball on you. Yeah, we, 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 we struggle because instead of keeping our eyes on Jesus and saying, well, what would you help me to do? I'm so caught up of how, how I felt when he said. Or how I felt when he didn't do or when he did. Your feelings and emotions have nothing to do with serving your husband. I know that's a hard pill to swallow, and I'm still yeah, working with it. I want y'all to know I, ain't, I, 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 I haven't arrived at none of this because I'm teaching. I'm just teaching because God the Holy Spirit told me that's to teach right, this class. Right, but I haven't right. arrived at any of this stuff. I'm talking to myself as I'm talking to you. All right. <laughs>